Alrighty then, welcome back. Now, we are on number two here. So let's look at selecting elements and using variables. Now, the whole purpose of JavaScript is to be able to select elements and do something with them. So by elements, what I mean is I mean items on your page. So any single item is an element. So we're going to be able to select those items and manipulate them and do something with them. Okay, so let's look at variables to start with. So if I want to put an item inside, uh, if I want to hold an item for use later, I'm going to use something called a variable. So to declare a variable, we say var like this, and then we give the variable a name. Now the name can be any uh, letters of the alphabet, or you can start with an underscore like this but it cannot start with numbers. It has to start with a letter, maybe an underscore. And then you can put numbers there if you want. So now we just want it simple and say var a, and then we put the equal sign to give it a value. Now you don't have to put an equal sign. You can just do that. That's enough. So once I say var a, what I'm actually saying is I'm telling uh, JavaScript net, get a location in memory, an empty location, and set it aside because I want to put something there eventually. So this is what I'm saying here. I'm saying get an empty area and set it aside. Then I can later say that A, which I have declared, so you only use var when you're making the declaration that this is a memory location somewhere called A. So if I say A is equal to 2 like that, don't forget the semicolon, yeah? So now this area that I set aside contains the number two, okay? And then if I have another variable, I can say b is equal to four, like that, okay? So now I have another uh, variable called b, which I've equated to four. So as you can see here, the first time I just declared it, and then I set a a value much later or I can do it immediately in one line and just say var b is equal to 4. Same thing this and that but this is much cleaner. So now finally what I can say as I can say var c is equal to a plus b like so. So it's going to do a mathematical operation here a plus b. Now a in our case is 2, b is 4 so when you add these two together, we get six. Now, like I said, in order for us to see a value, we're going to use the alert like that. So I want you to alert what's inside C, like so. Okay, so we are expecting to get a number six, which we do get there. So in the same way, we can use the console and say console.log C, like that. Refresh and we see the number there. Interesting, right? Now, uh, this is all good, but keep in mind that if a was equal to a string, like a string is text, this is a good, like that, and then b is equal to morning, like that. So this is some text, it says this is a good and then B is morning. If I try to add the two, it's simply going to connect this and that together. So let's see that in the console. So it says this is a good morning. So as you can see, the plus sign here represents adding if these are numbers and then it represents connecting the two if they are strings. So if even this one is two like that, two in inverted commas is still a string so we're still going to get a result like this this is a good two even when i it's not a string like this for as long as one of the items being added is a string it will just connect them as the strings okay that's how it is so this is how variables are used so this letter here is a variable because it varies over time I can 
give it a different value for example b here i can say now b is equal to 20 this is very valid now instead of 2 we're going to see a 20 here which is being added to it if i refresh the page i see a 20. so that's why this is called a variable because it, its value can vary over time you can say, assign any value to it all right so now let's look at how to grab an item and actually shove it into a variable so the same way we've created this variable and say a is equal to that so let's do it in one single line here i'm going to delete all this like that and remove all that so only thing i have now is var a is equal to this is good but i don't want it to be equal to this i want it to be equal to an item that is here so in order for you to be able to use or to do something to an item you must grab it first so let's grab it let's grab one item and shove it into the a variable so here i'm going to put an input which we are all used to the type of text yeah so let's come here and i'm going to refresh my page and you're going to see the item right there okay so let me zoom in a little bit here so this is our input now in order for your input to to be able to be grabbed properly for you to be able to grab that input you need to have an id that is unique to that item so there are three ways to do it oh i don't know it cut more than more than that though so for example i can give it an id and say this one has an id of my input like that right the other way i could do it is to give it a class name so i say it has a class of um, my class whatever that class name is now the thing about classes is that you can put many classes in here right i can say my class and i can also say my uh, my input okay so this is one class and this is another so this is very valid in html you can put two classes like this now you can use javascript uh, you can use these classes to identify this item so we can either use the id or we can use the classes so let's begin with the id first so our id is my input so what i will tell it is this i will say window now window is a global very uh, a global it's a variable yes a, glo a global variable that contains all variables in here so anything you create for example uh here i created a now a is part of window because window is the biggest object in 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 the script here okay so just keep in mind that this is the mother of everything you create in here it's the mother object of everything so inside the window there is what we call a document so window dot document like that so what i'm saying is that i want to grab the document of this window and this is why we use this dot notation so when i say dot i'm just saying this is a child of this this is the mother this is the child now this child can have other children here and more and it can keep going like that this is how you refer to a child of a child of a child just like that now because uh, document is so prevalent in javascript you can use it without evoking window so we can go directly to document like that though you can do this directly with every other item that is down the chain but document is so common that we can use it just like that so i'll say document which is the page here dot get element so this is the the name we have to call by id like that now a few things to take note here this get element by id uh, is something you have to memorize because it was created by the people who created javascript to be the thing that we'll be using to grab an item using its id so you just have to memorize that and take care of the capitalization here it's very important most things in javascript are capitalized like this if you're going to be using a method that has more than one word in it so here's get element by id it will always be in camel case like that 
it will start with a small letter and then it will have a capital letter for every new word that is in there so document dot which is this is the child of document this is the fact that it has two brackets here means it's a function mean, meaning it does something if it didn't have those brackets like this it would mean it contains a value of some kind it's just like a variable like this which contains something but if it has brackets like this it means it actually does something it's a function so get element by id now this function dictates that we give it the name of the element that we want to get in our case it's my input like so and so this is all we need to do so when i say document dot get element by id and i put the id in there so now a contains this item here now to prove it i can show you in the console so i can say console sorry there console dot log and then say a like that okay so let me come back here for a second if i refresh you see that the console is showing me the very item that i had input there which is that item there okay so you see that this is what it actually contains inside a so i've managed to grab that item and put it inside a okay so let's see how else we can grab items now we don't need to use the id we can use the class name okay so let's try that now actually before we go to the class name let's look at the tag name itself so here i'll say document dot get elements by tag name so camel case there you have to remember that now tag name gets the tag name like this so in this case if i want to get the body i'll put tag name body or tag name head or meta or title or whatever it is now because there can be many items in here that have an input uh, it will give me more than one item in there so here in this case it's it's a tag name of input so this one here input so any input on this page is going to be part of a so let's see the result of this here and then here you see that it says it's an html collection this is the result it's an html collection and the length is one okay so it means there's one item in there so let me come back here for a moment now get elements don't forget the s there it's elements by tag name now if i duplicate that and i get two elements there now watch what will happen here we have length of one right if i refresh you'll see that now it has a length of two because there are two item length there is here there's this item here and there's that item there so two items in that one collection if I do this, then you can clearly see there's that one item, another item, and the length is two. Okay, so this grabs a collection of all those items. So let's look at another way of uh, selecting using class names. Now, in order to select by a class name, you change this. You say get elements. You use query selector. So let's use query selector. So we say query selector. Now, query selector is one of my favorite because uh, you can use this to select using any. You can uh, use query selector to select the ID, to select the class name, or to select the tag name. So let's try by selecting the ID first. Now, keep in mind there are two items with the same ID, which you shouldn't be doing in your page, but in our case it is. So what it will do is it will get the very first item that it finds with that that matches uh, your search criteria. So here, if I come here and say document.querySelector, I have to specify whether I am looking at the ID, the class, or the tag name. So to specify that it's the ID, you put a hash like so before the name. So let's refresh, and we see we get our input, right? The very first one just one now if i want to use the uh the tag name i will just remove all that no hash there just input which is the tag name there 
So if I do this and refresh, I do get the same item again. Now, if I want to use the class name, I will have to put a dot. So I'm going to say my class like that, following this class, and then I'll put a dot at the beginning. So I'm telling it that look for classes. So I'll refresh and now it's looking for classes and it has gotten me the same item again. Now the beauty of query selector is there's a version of it which is query selector all. So query selector all, capital A there. So now if I select the my class, since there are two items with the same class, I'm going to get both of them. So let's come back here. And then if I refresh, now I have a node list, which has two items in there. If I click there, you see there, one item, two item, and it's of length two, which is very nice, right? So this is how you actually select items. It's the same thing if I want to select more than one uh, item which has an input uh, of tag name input, I'll just say input like that. So as long as there's all there, it will select whatever matches what you've put here. So in this case, I'll get exactly the same result, a node list with two items. Okay, so uh, this is how you select items. So let's go back here for a second to see if I'm not missing anything. And so we've tackled this one. So you get an item and shove it inside a variable. And this is how you do it. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to see what loops can do See you then.